I can put some juice on you. Oh, God. We need to start buffing you. Desperately. We'll take that six. That'll drop us down to four, and then he's going to do one to us. And we're going to take another one. Another one. Fine. When they actually get to the pyre, they can't do much, and that's okay. Yes, perfect. Good. Then we'll get those the hell out of there. He's going to put one in there. We've only got two left. Ugh. It just there's so many that I have to keep spending time, you know, putting stuff else. I guess I'll take that. I've still got a hundred. I think I'm even going to come in at above 100. But yeah, so you just like, you, you struggle to, to get back to where you were, you know, last, last run. And that can be a little frustrating, you know? Sorry, I kind of lifted that. Frustrating. Of course, is the proper way to pronounce it. It's just a little irritating, because like, god, I was already there. I was this close to being done, in fact. Oh, that's so... I think there's a gun shot that I tried. It's fireworks. What do people have here? Let's put a stop to you. Live in the city now, so you know. Probably impossible to deal with gun violence. enough. Give me something besides those guys, please, for the love of God. So, I think this might be unbeatable. The, the thing is, is that they say, oh no, nothing's ever unbeatable. But like, The thing is, you know, they would. All, I, I've, I'm sure that I've complained about this a million times before. But something that would happen when you would play Slay the Spire is they would say, "Oh, this is beatable." Um, and it might not necessarily have been beatable. Um, what would happen is like. They would say, yes, this can be beaten, but that doesn't mean it's beatable. So you would say, I'm going to do a, like a, I don't know, bleed build or something. I know what my problem is. I don't have enough morsels. I can't get enough, like, guys coming out because I just don't have enough with me. And since, you know, my guy is based on how many morsels he's throwing at at all times, I need him to be, you know, throwing out more morsels than he is. 
Like, look, I'm just, I'm just getting some crappy plus one. So yeah, like, in Slay the Spire, they would give you options like, hey, you can do a, you know, a, 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 a shiv deck, and you can throw out a bunch of knives and stab people with them. See, look at that. My champ's gonna die now. The problem is if I put him on the top row. Then I have other problems. Because then, you know, these guys downstairs just keep building up, you know, crap. See, now I have three of those coming out fresh. And that's a problem. And then two will have four. Look at that. Look at all this. So let's try this instead. Bam, bam. So that's a nine, whereas this is two for five. See, look at that, so many. And and that's because I'm not, you know, downstairs scraping all of this crap out of my deck. Because if I was upstairs dealing with it, then I could stop. Them. But because I have to be down here, I can't, but I'm not. You know, and, and, and that's the thing, like, because of the way that I've built all these characters with cards, it might not be possible for me to win, and that would be unfortunate. But it would also just be, like, a fact of the matter. You know, like, I just won't have the stuff I need to win. And that's, like, really unfortunate. And, like, I really don't even think a game should be built that way. You know, I... I I'm somebody who grew up in the in the 90s. Well, I didn't grow up in the 90s. I, I, I grew up in the early 2000s. But what I mean is I had to put up with a lot of 1990s decisions in video games. And I feel like we should have moved past that. And so I think about stuff like, oh yeah, you built your character wrong, and now you can't beat the game. And like, there's stuff in like a like a Fallout, like, oh, you did this action and this choice for this character, but uh, so you uh, can't beat the game now because you need to get the good ending in order to uh, do that. And uh, you can't, you can't get the good ending and uh, do that action that you that you've just done. And to that I say, wait, what the hell? Can't I, why, why can't I do the game? But to that they just say top. It's one of those things of like... Sometimes games would be developed in such a way where... They could not be beaten within their specific the specific parameters given. And that, that was wrong. It was wrong of them to do that. Um, you know, I think about like, you know, classic CRPGs. So close. I don't know if the uh, if showering down changes the uh, like the chance to win. All right, I'm gonna do twenty, thirty, twenty. We came up a little short, but yeah, I think I'm 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 gonna give it up there. But yeah, I have I have gotten to 25, and every time it takes me a little longer to beat. <laughs> um, but I have reached 25 at the very least, and I feel proud of myself. I'm I'm I feel good about that. It is good, in fact. Uh, I'm pleased that uh, that I can actually play this game because one of the problems that I had with Slay the Spire is once you 
like finish the once you finish the the thing and actually start the game then they're like okay well now uh go ahead and start you know doing the real game but i i always had such a problem with those challenges and i really felt like that shouldn't be the case like the the thing is is with a roguelike every single person who plays a roguelike is going to make that choice of do i go nuts over this i talked about this in the past i know but um because obviously you know look at the dark souls community some jackass is going to go find the super boss at level one and you know beat that boss to death with their fist at level one with no weapons and no armor and they're just going to perfect roll everything and never drink and never heal and that's how they and that's how they play the game you know it's it's almost inevitable at this point because once somebody saw oh hey i can be dark souls without leveling or demon souls in fact i can be demon souls without leveling up well now that became a thing and uh uh once it was a thing people were like oh man maybe i can do it and now you have a whole bunch of streamers and, and jackasses around the world trying it. Um, and so now it's just kind of an accepted fact that, like, yes, eventually somebody is going to beat a really hard game without equipment. Um, as long as the game is popular enough and fun enough. And the thing is, is that Slay the Spire is really fun. And so I, I know for a fact that somebody, some rat fuck meathead, as I would describe them, uh, a term that is not as offensive as it sounds. I use it at least somewhat affectionately because I know a bunch of rat fuck meatheads who will do this. But some... What is, what is the RFMH? Yeah. Somebody is going to beat it at the highest difficulty. Somebody is going to turn on every modifier and beat the game without getting hit. You know, They're going to do everything to make it work against them and they're going to do a billion runs if it takes them. You know, they might even hack and cheat to show that it can be done and modify their probability just to provide evidence that it's possible. But it will be done. One way or another, it'll eventually get done. Sorry. My, my, my turtleneck is blending with my beard and it's making me look very strange. My beard stops here, but my turtleneck goes to here. I'm not Amish. My beard is not this long. <laughs> um, so it's, it's one of those things where somebody is going to do it, you know? The problem is that I can't get past one. Like, I, I run aground on one. I've never been able to beat one. I've gotten close with multiple characters and multiple decks and multiple temps. You know, I've done a curse deck, and I've done an armor deck, and what was the other one? Is, is it a rage deck? Something like that. Um, and I've done a shiv deck and a poison deck, and I've never been able to beat the boss at the top of the tower. The, the spire that we're slaying. In fact. <laughs> Name of the game. Um, I've never been able to, uh, with, with the 80 hours that I put in and it's, I find it just really unfortunate. I would really like to beat that game. I enjoy that game and I would like to play it. And I feel like the, the minimum should be lower, right? The buy-in should be way lower. It should be easier at the start. And then at the end, it can get way, way harder because somebody's going to do it, you know? I feel like the easier, I feel like the easiest option should be easier for some games. And I feel like the hardest option should be harder. And sometimes those are the same game. Like, as long as you're willing to let somebody do the buy-in and, and get it done easy and they can say, okay, I beat it. I, I saw what I wanted to see. I've seen everything the game can offer me. Everything after this will just be harder, you know? Um, like that's one reason why people keep coming back to Dark Souls 1 because Dark Souls 1 is often only as hard as you make it and, and so you know you can just armor up and put a whole bunch of points into health and use a Zwei hander or something stupid like that and just cheese through the game and it's not a problem um, but with, with Dark Souls you know you keep going through new game pluses or you use less and less crutch items and make the game harder and harder and harder until you're playing a hard game again, you know? Because people think of... I, I bring up Dark Souls a lot with difficulty, but it's because Dark Souls handles its difficulty very, very intelligently. Not even well, just intelligently. Sometimes there are some things that are very stupid in Dark Souls, but almost everything is handled with a lot of intentional work put in. Um, and, and 
when you have a roguelike like this where it's very, very linear, you know, the, I mean, the game is essentially the same every time. I, I have sat down for this, loosely, the same eight battles. And, like, yes, I know there's different guys, but at the end of the day, there will be eight battles in a row. And that's the game, you know? Just eight card games. That's it. And, but that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, and, and so, like, once you do, you know, one of every single battle... And, you know, I have seen every enemy in this game at least once, you know, and I can say, yes, I do want to go further. I want to try harder. I want to see what's next. And I'm excited about that. Um, and it's why I'm just like, I'm very, very pleased with the development of a lot of games. And I'm very disappointed in the development of others where th this is just a thing it is a hammer I'm pounding down on now. But just make your buy in lower, you know, make the easier, easier for some people, make easy, easier and make hard, harder, you know. You can't, like, it is possible to cater to people who can't play games and cater to really hardcore challenge gamers at the same time. You know, if you set, God of War came out recently, if you set God of War to story mode, it's really easy. You know, almost anyone could beat it as long as they have, you know, at least some grasp of it. And some games, even story mode, like the easiest difficulty just turns off combat. But then, uh, uh, like, hard mode in God of War is, like, harder than your hardest Dark Souls. Like, every single fight in, in God of War hard mode, uh, give me God of War, which I have played as well. It's, I haven't beaten it uh, due to some save bug issues. Yeah, very unfortunate, I know. Um, I've not beaten it due to save bugs, but, you know, every single fight in give me God of War is, like, as hard as, like, one of your really drag out knuckle down souls fights and that's cool like souls boss fights every time you go to regular enemies that's awesome and and like the buy-in is low and and the cap out is high that's great um but yeah this this is when, when i when i when i started doing this show i was like i like roguelikes my friends like roguelikes i'll just do a whole bunch of roguelikes um but one thing that, that I've, I've begun to notice is that I've started to identify all the things that I really like in a roguelike, you know? I, I've started to dig in and find every single piece of every single game that I like. And, you know, there's a lot that I really like in Monster Train. There's a lot that I don't like. There is some stuff that's really good from Slay of the Spire still, and there's stuff that I'm still mad about. Uh, and, and this is the case for everything. And so this, this is, what am I saying? This, it's not like my creed or something, but th this has become almost the new mission statement of Friday Night Roguelikes, of just find what is good in a roguelike, find what sh you should not do, and then move on. Because one thing about roguelikes is that roguelikes are some of the easiest games to develop because people don't expect much out of it. People will still play the original rogue that runs on a, not a computer, but on a terminal, you know? It uses ASCII, ASCII graphics. Sorry, I'm dyslexic and I've never read that word correctly. Uh, but so, it requires no art assets and it requires, you know, only a basic stripped down version of first edition D&D rules to play. That's a very, very simple game to start developing. And so a lot of people develop roguelikes just sometimes for fun. Like, they don't even want other people to play them. They just want to build a roguelike. Um, when I played Tower of Guns, I talked about feature creep. And about how that can, like, really, really bog down your game. Um, but there's, there's a lot of lessons that you can take. And just looking at a whole bunch of roguelikes... Like, you know, in the show Friday Night Roguelikes, just starting at episode one and seeing, okay, these are the initial few roguelikes ever created. Moria, Rogue, Angbad, you know, all that. And then, you know, going to very, very glitzy and glamorous stuff like this, Monster Train, where it's like everything is a card and there's a lot of production value and there's beautiful art assets. And it's very fun and fast paced, even though it's a card game and a ro role playing game. But yeah, I, I feel like 
I want people to be able to take a good message from this. Um, sorry, I'm getting sentimental. I, I just finished uh, uh, recording some other stuff. I'm still wearing the turtleneck from Oblivion. Um, so I, I want to share just some deeper thoughts. I hope that's all right. Uh, this is not the end of the season, and it's also not the end of Friday Night Roguelikes, but I wanted to share some thoughts about this. But, you know, hopefully Friday Night Roguelikes is at the very least a fun show to watch. But if somebody can learn something about game design or game theory or anything, really, then I'll be happy. All I want to do is teach. But yeah, uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Friday Night Roguelikes. I hope you have a good night. Well, day. I post these in the day. It's night right now, though. Um, I hope you have a good day. I have had a very fun time. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.